Welcome to the Mystic Access Podcast, where the magic is in learning. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the December 1st, 2020 episode of the Mystic Access Podcast. She's Kim. He's Chris. Can you believe that it's already December? No. I hope all of you who were celebrating Thanksgiving here in the States had a wonderful one. If it was a little strange, we are really sorry to hear that and we understand. But we first want to begin by thanking those of you who attended our open house on the Friday after Thanksgiving. It was a lot of fun. I said to everyone there that this was the most chill open house I think we've ever had. We were all just kind of relaxed and it was really low key. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. And we really enjoyed it and we hope you guys really enjoyed it. Many of you came and went over the time that we spent together and we hope you had a wonderful wonderful time and the funny thing was it was from one to five well sort of it went from one to six yeah it was almost six it was like three minutes till six or something when it broke up so we stayed a long time and we had a lot of fun and we hope you enjoyed and if you weren't able to come don't worry we will have another one probably sometime in the spring we don't have them often because they're a lot of work and they take a lot of time but they're a lot of fun too so we try and always have a couple a year so that you guys have the opportunity to come and join us. And if you do come and join us, just don't hesitate to yell out when you're in there. And you can talk to us and ask your questions and we can have a great time. The topics generally work their way from technology to all sorts of things. And we also, of course, will happily talk about anything Mystic Access related as well. So it's always a fun time had by all. But no, Chris, I cannot believe... We have reached December, and because we have reached December, we just finished up some Black Friday craziness, but I'm sure we'll have other lovely things happening in the course of this upcoming month. One thing we know we have coming up in December, though, is three new products for those of you, and we wanted to remind you about those. The first product is our new and exciting Bluetooth transmitter. So for those that have asked us about Bluetooth transmitters, because you have a Vector Stream or a CD player that doesn't have Bluetooth, we used to sell these Bluetooth transmitters until they finally went away. Now we found a new one because we've been asked multiple, multiple times if we had Bluetooth transmitters. And now the answer is yes, we do. And what makes this one nicer than our previous ones? It's got switches. So you don't have to press and hold and hope that it's on or hope that it's off or put it in pairing mode. It actually has a switch for on off. It has a switch for transmission and receiving, which the other ones did as well. And then it also allows you to press a button in order to put it into pairing mode. So again, there's no hoping and praying that it's in pairing mode. It's in pairing mode. You can always know that for sure. And another cool thing is it comes with all these different cables. So it comes with a three and a half to three and a half. It comes with a three and a half to RCA. So if you want to connect it to a stereo, it also has a little optical cable. If you wanted to connect it to a stereo that has an optical input or an optical output. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can just forget it. But it looks like a weird cable end and it looks like on the end that you connect both on the transmitter and the stereo i guess it looks like a little door that you can press your finger into and that's how you'll know if you have that kind of port but it's supposed to be digital sound and it's supposed to be a very very clean sound as well so if you have a decent optical cable you won't hear any hum or interference or anything like that. So it's supposed to be very, very clear sound. And we'll be showing you all the tips and tricks of this transmitter receiver in the tutorial that comes with it. For those of you who have never bought hardware from us before, all of our hardware, unless it's cable or something like that, will come with a tutorial so that you will know via the audio documentation what to do and how it works. We'll orient you to the product and we'll show you exactly how to use it. So that's one product that we have coming out and that will be coming out first that you can buy and have shipped directly to you or to someone you love. And these will go very fast, you guys. So when I send out a message that says, hey, this is out, you want to be on the website buying it or calling us. 
because these you're going to fly. <laughs> we have 10 in stock right now. And one's already spoken for. And one's already spoken for. So we have nine that you can grab. So one person's already said, I want mine, I want mine. So she's at the top of the list. She's put herself there and we have put one aside for her. So you're next. If you want it, you need to make sure that you are right on it when we offer these, when we have these up. So they'll be up probably in a couple days from the time you're listening to this, if you're listening on release date. The next product we have coming out is a set of headphones. And these are amazing for their price point. They sound almost as good as the Bose Quiet Comfort series of headphones. While their noise cancellation isn't quite on par with those, their sound quality is almost on par with those. They are amazing, and you can get them from us for well under 100 bucks. So we are really excited to be offering these to you. They are Anchor headphones, so they sound really amazing, and their quality is really amazing. And they have voice prompts that will explain exactly what you're doing, and they'll have little sounds in addition to some voice prompts that will explain exactly what you're doing. I'm trying to remember if you're just using them with the default modes like noise canceling and stuff, they have at least a 40 hour, four zero hour play time before you need to charge them again. They're mind blowing. Yeah, that is correct. If you have noise canceling on, they say anywhere between 30 and 40, but they're touting 40. And if I remember correctly as well, if you don't use noise canceling, you get about 60 hours if you're just using them in what's they call the music mode which is bass off because they also have a bass boosting ability and noise canceling off then you will get larger amounts of playtime and they're bluetooth 5 so you've got really great range with them as well so these would be a heck of a gift to give to yourself or someone you love this holiday season if you know someone who's in the market for a new set of would you think these are over ear or on ear? How would you think of these? I don't know because our sharks were classified as on ear, but for me, they were over the ear. So huh. I guess it depends on the size of ear that you have. I think if I remember correctly, these ones are also classified as over the ear. Yeah, it's a little hard to know until you get them. They are pretty comfortable in terms of long wear. They aren't my bows, but they also don't cost what my bows cost. <laughs> they sound incredible. So you've got lots of options with these. Really excited to be offering these to y'all. And these should be out probably by the end of the week. So if you're listening to this on release date, look by Saturday, Sunday. What I might try and do is wait until both these come out. Get these done as quickly as possible because these will be the faster to record the tutorial for and have these ready to go for y'all and then send out one note so y'all won't be barraged by notes coming out and saying, hey, this product is available. That's where those are and we think you'll really enjoy having those for Christmas and your holidays this winter. The other thing that we mentioned before that is up and available for pre-order but will probably not be out for another week or so as of release date of this is our Windows 10 tutorial. This thing has turned into a beast. <laughs> yeah, I don't even remember the length that it is just now. But if I had to guess, it is at least eight hours. I know we got a chunk back from our editor the other day. And the one chunk is close to five hours. I mean, it is quite insane. So what we have to do is we have to go ahead and basically put this beast together we have to put it together we have to clean up the edits we have to make sure everything is exactly as we want it to be and then chris has to go through and daisy it and that's going to be a hard task so there's quite a bit that we still have to do before you get this thing if you want an idea of what's in it though you can go look on the page i think i've got a 40 plus bullet pointed list that tells you about the items that will be covered in this tutorial it is insane it's a mammoth thing and if you want to learn about windows 10 and cut that intimidation factor and go can i really upgrade and not be confused <laughs> you can you should and we're going to show you how so there's a lot of hopefully good information in there that will help you out and what's nice about this is that there are also demos available that you can see all the way through you can see what we're doing and chris does most of the demos i do a few of them too as we get further through but we show you a lot of things that you can do to really customize your windows experience but also just to use it successfully and efficiently we hope you really enjoy this and find a lot of use in it one thing that we do do during the tutorial is we switch between the screen readers so we do 
we show you that one screen reader isn't the be all end all. And we even show narrator. So we go through a few sections just completely using narrator to show how evolved it has really become. It really has. So we show you three different screen readers during the course of the tutorial. So we hope that'll really help again with that stress factor of how's this going to work under my screen reader? Well, we show you JAWS, NVA, and Narrator. That will be out soon and you can pre-order it now. It's up and available for pre-order. So if you haven't done so already, it's up, it's available, you can pre-order it now and it will be out definitely before the end of December and hopefully, as I said, within a week of this podcast coming out. Now, as for a couple other things that are not coming out before the end of December, <laughs> we have a few things we want to remind you about. The first one is the Fire TV tutorial. This is one of those situations where we just put too much on the plate, too much was happening, and this has gotten pushed back. And we really, really apologize for that. Once I get into it and get started, it's going to go very quickly. So please, if you're sitting there, you are not going to be charged until it is released. So if you're willing to just hang out with us a little while longer, it will be out very soon. Probably one of the first things I'll do in January when we get back from Christmas vacay. So just hang out. It will be available. I will put more of a syllabus up for it as I get closer. And it's going to be a lot of fun, you guys. I'm really looking forward to showing you this great little device. And they have so many Fire Sticks and Fire TVs on special right now on Amazon. It is crazy. So if you end up with one of these under your tree, this may be something that you would like to check out because it uses the Ivona voices and it is beautifully accessible. A couple more things that we're going to talk about that, are again, aren't going to be available until at least after the first of the year. That is the Cubrail tutorial. So Kim has the Cubrail. I do. She's so excited about it. She hasn't even opened it. I've not. <laughs> <laughs> That is so true. I've been so busy and I have one super secret project I can't talk about right now. That is really kind of my first priority in the new year. It won't take me very long, but it has overwhelmed the cube rail anticipation. There's other things I have to do. So once that's done, I can get back to cube rail and actually open it and put it through its paces and all these things. So we'll be coming and it's not coming yet. <laughs> Sorry. So it's not but, even up yet. Right. But we will put it up for pre-order. Well, as we, soon as we can, yes, I need to look at it first. So it probably won't even go up for pre-order until the new year. The next thing is something that we have been asked about for quite a while, and that is a tutorial on 1Password. A couple few years ago, we asked people if they were interested in a 1Password tutorial so that we could gauge interest, and we got about five takers. And I think three of them wanted it for free, which isn't going to happen. What we're going to do this time is create such a tutorial and it's going to go through the paces of the product on all operating systems that it supports and that I have access to. We're talking Windows, we're talking showing it a little bit on a Mac, we're talking about iOS and Android. I just heard that they had a Linux product, but that's just not going to happen because I don't have nor understand Linux. So unfortunately for you Linux users out there, it's not going to be part of the 1Password tutorial. Does it work under Fire OS or does that enough like Android to make Android the... I don't know if it's actually in the Amazon store. If it's in the Amazon store, then yes, it would work. Okay, so Chris will have to look at that and find out. I mentioned that because I'm going to segue with it in a second. <laughs> That's pretty much how this is going to work. For those who don't know what 1Password is, it is a very, very accessible password manager where you can save your passwords, your credit card numbers, and your identities and things like that to autofill on websites and, and just have a way for you to look up those items. You know, if you have to look up your credit card number, you can. I used to memorize my credit card number, but I've long since don't do that anymore. I do. It's really handy if you're talking to somebody on a phone. You actually need to give it to them. I don't talk to people on the phone. <laughs> this is true. And if I, it's like a social butterfly. <laughs> and if I do talk to people on the phone and I need know I'm going to have to give my credit card number, I'll just grab it out of 1Password first. Yeah, that's an option. So I will be putting a page up for this. I don't know when exactly, guys. It might be this week. It might be next. As soon as I have a free hour to put it up. Chris has given me a sort of outline for it. 
and I want to make sure that that's completed and I can put it up on a page and get the pre-order ready for that if y'all want to start ordering. That would be helpful to Chris, I know, so he can gauge interest. It will be done at this stage in the game, but it would be really nice if some of you would decide to go ahead and pre-order it because that always helps out, makes things a little easier. Speaking of things that you may receive under your Christmas tree and something that may make your life a little easier when using it. Let's go back to what I said to Chris a moment ago about Fire OS and its ability to be used with 1Password. If you get a Fire Tablet under your tree, please don't forget that that is now available as well. We now have a Fire Tablet tutorial. I'm very proud of it. I really hope you guys are liking it and it is available on the website right now. So it's eight hours of material. I had so much fun putting it together <laughs> and I really hope you guys enjoy it. It is such a nice experience 90% of the time and in 90% of circumstances. I would say it is a great experience. So if you get a Fire Tablet or you thought about a Fire Tablet, particularly for those of you who are new touchscreen users and you're thinking, I really need to start playing with a touchscreen. You can buy a Fire Tablet for under 150 bucks, and you can get a lot of use out of it. And the new ones have ALEXA built in as well. There's a lot in this tutorial. I really hope you'll find it useful. And if you would like to check it out, it is cheaper than a Fire Tablet. So you can check it out first if you want to try before you buy, as it were. Or watch me try before you buy. And you can check it out and find out if a Fire Tablet might be something that is workable for you or useful to you. So just want to let you know that that is the newest thing that is up and out and available for you to purchase in terms of a documentation product. So speaking of things that are available, but not necessarily from us, well, there's one thing that we're going to be talking about in this podcast that's available from us, aside from what we've already mentioned. This is a jam-packed episode, so we hope you guys will hang out for the ride. I'm sure it's the longest one before the end of the year. We have two castle segments, one with Brittany Stovall, who offers a lot of really awesome adaptive products and just some really cool stuff. It was such a joy to be able to chat with Brittany about her offerings. She and her hubby are doing great work. The other castle insert you will hear is with Cassell Wilson, who is editor and programs manager with National Braille Press. So Cassell is going to talk about the holiday offerings that you can find there. One of those might actually be from us too, so you might want to stay tuned for that. And, of course, later in the episode, we will be joined by our friend and colleague, Barry Scheuer. And we're going to talk about a new collaborative venture between Mystic Access and Guide Lights and Gadgets. So, lots of goodies coming up in today's episode, you guys. Welcome to the Mystic Access Magic Castle. We are in the Mystic Axis Magic Castle, and we are, again, talking with another blind entrepreneur that we have, at least I have for sure, worked with in the past, and her name is Brittany Stovall. Did I get that right? Yeah, Stovall. Okay, uh-huh. perfect. And I purchased a couple things from Brittany, and one was the Google Nest Display Home Hub, or whatever they decide to call it at this point. They kind of rename things, and it arrived. It arrived really well, packaging and communications and all that stuff. We've had a good conversation back and forth. I also purchased one of your tactile tape measure from Brittany as well. And I sent it off to Kim. And Kim, tell me what you think of that. I like it. It's just a loose tape measure and you can take it and you can fold it up and roll it up and then you can unroll it to wherever you want to be. And it was just nice, simple, innovatively done. And I can find out the info I need to know for my measurements. So it's great. Easy peasy. And so we're just going to let Brittany tell us what you have, because you have a lot of interesting kind of products that somebody might use in their daily living skills. Yeah, definitely. My husband and I created D&B Accessibility to help others with their independent living needs. So we specialize in independent living aids and devices with a side of convenience and fun. That's what I tell people. Probably one of our most popular departments are tactile markers. So whether you call them tactile markers, bump dots, bump ons, locator dots, you know, they kind of have a plethora of names, but that's our biggest seller. So we have over 15 tactile markers in stock at all times. They consist of different materials. We have some made of cork, felt, a soft silicone that some may think is rubber, but it's really silicone. And also a thin plastic, that is what the locator dots are made of. And so they come in a variety of shapes, colors, different sizes, and then the different material and texture. 
We sell them in a variety pack of 25 and 40. And we also sell them in a dozen single packs. So if you've purchased a variety pack from us and you find this one dot that you really just got to have on your microwave, you can contact us and we'll have it in stock and we can sell it to you in a single pack as well. So our variety packs for 25 markers is 525. Our 40 packs are 940. And then the single dozen packs are $3 a piece. And the good thing about all of our pricing for tactile markers and our Braille products are our shipping costs are configured into the price. So there's no additional shipping into that. And aside from that, we also do sell locator dots. Locator dots are great. They're infamous. Everybody likes them. They are kind of expensive. And so we sell them on a card of six for $3. And then we also have dot in opposition to that. And we just kind of named them ourselves the tiny dots in opposition to locator Mm -hmm. dots. But they sell for a dozen for $4 or you can get three packs for $11. And the only difference really is the material they're made of. So they are made of a soft silicone instead of a plastic. They're really the same shape and the same size. They fit on a keyboard, which is what everybody likes locator dots for, are for putting on their keyboard keys for modifiers and different things like that. So we do have that. Another popular product we have that is really common, especially with COVID now, everyone's staying home and wanting to organize, is labeling tape or Dymo tape. And we sell it and it's clear and it comes in rolls of 12 feet. There's different sizes, so you can either purchase it in one half inch height or three eighths of an inch height, and it fits all slates, like slate slots and the Ryzen label gun. So if you use those, it definitely works great. It has the pre-adhesive on the back of it, so you just braille it, peel it, and place it, and it sticks literally to any hard surface that, you know, is not wet or anything like that. So we do sell that for $4 a roll, or to the end of the year, we are selling it for three rolls for $10. The nice thing about labeling tape is that I've had some on chargers for when you know, you know, back in the day when you used to have to remember what charger you had connected or to label what your device. own charger. Yeah, that was exactly. Fun. Yeah. I've I've seen some with labeling tape still on it from 10, 12 years ago. Oh, so, me too. Yeah. That's awesome. Yes. And and I'm glad that you say that because that's not really how it works nowadays. I don't know if it's the, you know, if you buy a bunch of it, if the different processor or vending companies are just buying it in bulk and not selling it out quickly enough. But I get a lot of complaints that, you know, I put this label on this cassette two weeks ago and I went back and it was stuck to my dog's foot the next day. You know what I mean? Yes. It falls off. It's not sticky. So I have a, you know, a buyer's guarantee. If you do not like it and you purchase more than one roll, I'll buy them back from you because our labeling tape has really good, you know, good quality adhesive on the back of it. So that's definitely one of the things we live by. Um, yeah, I couldn't live without Dymo tape. I just yeah, can't. you're not the yeah. only one who's said that about the tape just falling off. And I haven't used mm-hmm. label tape in quite a long time. So some of the stuff was from 10, 12 years ago. But Yeah. I use it yeah. all the time and I still have those problems. It's like, oh, there used yeah. to be a label here. I probably vacuumed it up last week. Great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and I also have a labeling slate bundle. And I offer this because... A lot of people don't know what those fancy slots are on the slates, and that's really for you to put your labeling tape through it, and I honestly have never used it for that either. But they have a slate and stylus that is just one line, and it has 25 cells on it. So you literally string your tape into it. It comes with a stylus. You braille what you need, and then you cut it to size and peel it and place it. So we do have those for $14, and it comes with your choice of a stylus. So I sell, I think, six different kinds. If you have a specific type that you, some people like wooden handles or safety stylus, you know, different options there are there for that. And then get into the more fun stuff. We do sell a lot of Braille playing cards. So if you like to play a game of poker on Thanksgiving or Christmas, we sell standard Braille playing cards, the decks for $13 as well as Uno. So, you know, they typically have the Braille in the top left corner and the bottom right. Yeah, those are great. 
And we sell jumbo playing cards. And whether you have low vision and you need those or you give them to a family member as a novelty gift, they are literally five inches high and three inches wide. So you're playing with a pretty big deck of cards. But if you need that, they're great. And they are $9 a piece. And every deck that's purchased, we donate a deck to an assisted living facility of your choice. So, you know, everyone with COVID, they're stuck inside. We do, we've done a lot of work with assisted living facilities, even if it's just, you know, sending them letters in Braille and, you know, just different things just to spark their interest and give them something to have, you know, something to receive. They're definitely interested in that nowadays. Especially Um, with... COVID and some of these people that are in their assisted living and nursing homes, they're not seeing their families. They're so isolated so, from yeah, everybody. That, that does hurt. Yeah, and their, and their staff is really constricted. You know, mm-hmm. they're probably only seeing the same couple of people every yep. couple of days and yeah. just not a lot of interaction. So as much as, you know, anything we can do to make it better, we definitely like to take part and give back. That's cool. Another really popular item that we sell is a wireless phone charger. And when you think of wireless phone chargers, you probably think of a flat pad that you put your phone on and it starts charging. But the one that we sell is more of a cradle. You put your phone on it and it works with all iPhones after the iPhone 8. So whether you have the new 12 or the SE or, you know, anything in between there, you can lay your phone on it vertically or you can lay your phone also on it horizontally. So if you've ever had a kid whose iPad goes dead and they need to watch their videos, you can definitely put your phone on it horizontally so they can still enjoy their video while the phone is charging and you can go back to work and stay busy. So we do like those. They do not work with the Apple Watch, though. So that is one shortfall. But eliminating cords are definitely, I think, something of the future and something really hopefully going to take wave and move on. Because I don't know about you, but I have cords everywhere. Yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And everything has its own type. And it's so annoying. And then you can never find the... You got 100 cords and you can never find the one that you need. So if you have micro yeah. USB or USB-C, it's like, I need a USB-C. Where's those five USB-Cs? I don't know. So you have to find them. Yeah. So having a wireless yeah. charger, you just take that phone and put it on that charger. And it's amazing. I've converted myself over to wireless charging for my iPhone. I like it. It's yeah. so handy. Yeah. Yeah, so have we. So have we. Of course, you can't Another do anything really... about those proprietary cords. You're kind of stuck with those. <laughs> They're just well, laying around yeah. everywhere. Yeah. 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 They just kind of start throwing them in their own pile. And one day yeah, they'll right. have like 20 of micro USB cords and yep. not know what yeah, to right. do with them. Some of them still have their twist ties on them. Yeah. They still have their twist yeah. ties on them. <laughs> Maybe you can cash them in one day. You never totally. know. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Another really popular item that we have, you know, during COVID are tactile coloring books. So, you know, you don't have to be able to have vision to enjoy coloring and pass the time doing that. It's very relaxing and it gives you something to do that even if you have children, you know, you can take part in the family activity. So we do sell tactile coloring books for $14 and they have a variety of different pictures, animals, sea life. There are some stars and they're not super convoluted pictures either. You can definitely trace the lines and get a good idea of what you're looking at and things like that. So That's amazing. I didn't even popular. know such a crater existed. That is Me cool. <laughs> yeah. 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 They're really cool. And it, it makes me feel good because I have a lot of young nieces and nephews. And, you know, everyone loves the color, especially yeah. if there's nothing else to do. So they know Aunt Brittany can take part with them, you know, and there she's just like them yeah. and it'll probably not be just as pretty but they don't, they don't care they're <laughs> it's nice <all> good. <laughs> they're nice to me <laughs> when, when i used to when i was able to see when i was younger that was actually a pastime that i did was there were so many coloring books that i would just go and get and i was able to color you know my superman coloring books and stuff like that yeah you know it was really really yeah. fun to do that and i'm glad yeah. that such a thing exists yeah that is cool. yeah it does it does. And they also have loose leaf ones. Too. So if you don't want to do a whole booklet of one, I mean, definitely contact me because there are other options out there. If you don't know if it's a thing for you, you know, we'll find a solution and get you something that you'll bring out your artistic abilities. And another really popular product that we just started selling are tactile handwriting kits. So 
everyone's taught to write their signature, you know, as a child or as a young adult. But after you leave school, you don't really have that instruction. So we put these kits together. It contains 10 sheets of tactile writing paper. And this paper is a normal eight and a half by 11 in sheets. And it has smooth tactile lines that go up and down the paper so that you can feel, you know, where the red or the blue lines would be you know where your letters would stop. You want to try and write in between the lines as if you were signing your signature. And also with the kit, you receive a tactile letter sheet. So this is an embossed sheet of print letters so that you can feel what your A looks like, how your A is different from your B or your J is different from your L, different things like that. So it really helps one with their handwriting or at least their recognition, because even if you're not interested in learning how to write, if you ever have a box of something and you're not quite sure and your phone's dead, if you know or can recognize your tactile lettering, that helps a lot because, you know, you might be able to know what you're opening before you open the wrong package. I definitely use letter recognition all the time. That's a good point because sometimes, you know, even your boxes will have the company name embossed on the yeah. box. And if you can yeah. recognize those letters, that's really Yeah, awesome. if they're big enough, if they're not so itty bitty that you can't read them, but if they're yeah. big enough, you can absolutely do it. Yeah, or then they throw in cursive and that just messes everything up. Oh, yeah, up. right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a way to do that yet in embossing, but yep. there will be someday, I'm sure. So that also comes with either a 2020 pen or a ballpoint ink pen, and they're just $10 throughout the end of the year as well. So that's a great thing. Everyone loves signature guides. We have a 10-pack of signature guides for just $4, and they fit all your standard credit card size slots in any of your wallets or different things like that. And who doesn't need a signature guide? I you know, do. it goes back to the whole, <laughs> yeah, it goes back to the whole handwriting, you know, thing. So I was um, telling Brittany before we started, signature guides are like socks. You have them and then they're supposed to be here. And where did they go? Yeah. They're supposed to be in yeah. my purse. So, yeah. You can never have too many. I no. I have them in every pocket, definitely. And I, that's all I really have today to share. I do, I am working on putting a website together. I don't currently have one, but if you are interested in something or you want something, definitely contact me. I can give you my contact information and I would love to help you find what makes you tick and hopefully bring you some joy this holiday season. Yay, that's fun. And I really like that you ended up in this particular podcast because we're having this conversation with Cassell from MVP. So you might have your books covered and now you want to work on your own writing, specifically yeah. handwriting. You can do it. So it worked yeah. out great that you ended up here. I also appreciate the fact, and of course, this is one of the reasons that we wanted to feature the people who we featured this holiday season, is that you're a totally blind entrepreneur, and you're doing this yeah. thing too, and I love that, and I think it's great yeah. that we're all kind of out there, we need to support each other, <laughs> let's try and make sure that everybody gets a little bit of love, and however we do that, it's good to support our fellow entrepreneurs or our fellow business owners out there trying to get stuff done and help people out to, like you said, have a better holiday, and we're so isolated with things happening currently in the COVID situation and that may increase. So it's important to do this, get your gifts, get your stuff for yourself and give us your contact info. So if people want to get in touch, how will they do it? Yeah. So my email address, email is the best way to get in contact with me. My email address is SWMO, S is in Sam, W, M is in Missouri, O, disability advocate at gmail.com. You can also give me a call. I love to talk to all my customers. My phone number is area code 417-986-6296. And you can also reach us on Facebook. We have a Facebook page. It is facebook.com forward slash D and B accessibility. And it's all spelled out. So it's D A N D B accessibility. And yeah, we'd love to talk to anybody and help anybody out who is ever needing some independent living products. Love it. Thank you so and much. Yeah. And also just for a thank you for you guys allowing us to be on the podcast. If anybody does make a purchase, we are going to give all purchases 20% off. Just use mystic access as your promo code when Ooh. placing your order. So 
we definitely want to give back the love and show our appreciation. Oh, how awesome. How That's awesome. fun. Thank you. Yeah. I know our people. Yeah, and it's valid be... through the end of the year. So definitely Sweet. use it. I know our people will be psyched to hear that. We've got a large <laughs> listing community. So come on, guys. Yeah. Now you can save on your presents and your stuff yeah. for yourself. <laughs> how awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Brittany. We appreciate having you on so much. Thank you yeah, so no much. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Happy holidays, Mystic Access listeners. This is Santa, sending you warmest greetings from my extremely busy workshop. I'll be climbing down your chimney to stuff your stockings full of Christmas cheer before you can say Kris Kringle. And if you've been especially good, I'd love to bring you some special shiny gifts from Mystic Access to make your holidays extra bright. Before I make my list and check it twice, be sure to check out the Mystic Access shop page to find your favorite treats or something to make those you love very merry. Need ideas? Check out the podcast, listen to samples on mysticaccess.com, or give Chris and Kim a call at 716-543-3323. Merry Christmas, and I expect particularly delicious milk and cookies from you this Christmas Eve. Ho, ho, ho. And don't forget the reindeer. They get extra hungry pulling my humongous heavy sleigh around the world. See you soon. Ho, 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 ho. We have once again returned to the Mystic Access Magic Castle with a guest who has been here a couple of times. We are here with Cassell Wilson, who is Editor and Programs Manager with NDP. And we are going to share some holiday upcoming delights that you can be sure to experience later this year. There, I'm sure, is a fun book that could potentially be in your future or something fun from the NDP catalog. So it's always exciting to have Cassell here for holiday time and otherwise to chat about upcoming goodies. Cassell, welcome back again to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is this my second or my third year? I think this is my third year. It's your third. Uh, Yeah, it's your third time being here for sure. Yeah. 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 This is becoming quite a nice tradition. So thank you so much. It's always good to get a chance to talk to you. Most of the time we're emailing each other and we're sending manuscripts back and forth. Yeah, right. A phone call is always a nice alternative way to communicate as well. Yes, most definitely. I would agree. So we know there's always new stuff happening with NBP, but I also know that you have a bunch of different categories of things that are coming out over the course of the year from cookbooks to technology books to learning books, all sorts of various things that are happening. Perhaps let's just pick a category and kind of begin with something new and fun that might be coming out. So I don't know. Let's see. It's holidays. We're going to be festive. Maybe maybe we can't see all the people we love necessarily but maybe we could give them a treat of some kind. So perhaps, are there any new cookbooks, for instance, coming out for the holiday season? Sure, yeah, definitely. We have a couple new cookbooks this year, one that will be coming out right around the time of the holidays, but we have the Keto Diet Slow Cooker Favorites Cookbook. And then the new one is called Good and Cheap, Eat Well on $4 a Day. And that's a really quite an interesting cookbook because it is looking for recipes that are very affordable, but also ones that are healthy. So it's got a lot of really, really good information for someone who's looking to have a food budget that they can stick to, but also eat really well. I saw that in the catalog recently and was reading about it and really thought it was very fascinating. Pretty large amount of food in there for a really affordable price for people. So I think that'll be really fascinating and helpful for a lot of people, especially right now. Mm. And then to sort of follow up on that trend, eating and healthy eating, we put out a book this year called Fitness Over 50. And that's for anyone who is 50 or older and wants to incorporate an exercise routine into their life, something that will specifically fit into their ability levels, but also help them to work towards overall fitness. And this was put out by the National Institute on Aging. So this is a really great resource for anyone who's looking to become more healthy. 
That's really nice. So you can make your holiday dinners or you can make your keto or you can do whatever you need to do and then you can work out and get rid of some of those holiday pounds. So you've got both bases covered there nicely during the course of the upcoming season, which is great. Of course, you want to be fit all year round, but especially this time of the year, it can become a little more difficult. So that's great. I know every year MVP is famous for their holiday cards. So what's the fun for this 2020 holiday? Well, yes, every year we do a holiday card, and it's a really fun project for a couple different reasons. Most of all, it involves people from every single department in our company. So we have a holiday card committee, and we come together, people from every department, to brainstorm the concept, the actual message, as well as the design. So it's a really fun project that brings everyone together. And this year, the holiday card message, I'm going to open the card right now. I'm opening the file. So the message this year is, may this new year be the gift that brings us all together. So obviously, one of the things we were thinking about when we were designing this card is the pandemic and how it's changed everyone's life. It's affected everything. And we wanted to think about a card that talked about something that ultimately we come through and that brings us all together. So that's our holiday card theme for this year. And the design incorporates all of the different NBP colors, the six NBP colors. So we're really excited about this year's card. Oh, that's great. That'll be a nice treat for a lot of people. And that theme, of course, is highly appropriate to all these surreal experiences that we've all gone through this year. We were touching a second ago about the pandemic, and you were talking about the theme of this year's card, but there has been obviously so much surreal change and information that we've had to grasp and things we've had to get used to. And I know NVP, like everywhere else, has made shifts and has also made offerings to people to assist them in working their way through this or finding something that might help them to find a little calm in the storm, as it were, during the course of this. So what can you tell us about that piece? Well, yeah, the pandemic definitely affected us like every other company, certainly affected our operations, our production and our manufacturing. Not being able to, in the beginning, be physically together makes manufacturing very difficult. But we did adapt very quickly. And one of the things that we were sort of happy about was that through sheer coincidence, we had just published a few books that were really relevant. So all of a sudden, here we are all in a pandemic. And for instance, we had just put out a book called Dinner Delivered, which maybe you can talk a little bit about. (laughs) which we offered as a free download because it was so relevant. Many people in our community all of a sudden wanted to know more about how do I order groceries, how do I order food, how do I order meals using some of the apps that are available. So we got to offer that as a free download and also a Judy Dixon book called Getting Visual Assistance with an iPhone and then a Deborah Kendrick book, which was the Navigating Healthcare book. So it was just interesting that we had an opportunity and we happened to have a few titles that were just so timely that we were able to offer. And we heard from a lot of our community during this time. And it's just been interesting to see how everyone has been affected by it. I'm sure Mystic Access found the same thing. We did. And especially with the company being based in New York State, it was crazy. We had a couple of weeks there where we were terrified that we were going to close. And it was very, very scary. So it has been a humbling experience being here during all this in that regard, especially because people really stepped up and helped to keep us afloat during the course of this. And, you know, you have days where you're doing your job and you're like, oh, I got to go to work. I got to do blah. And some days it's particularly stressful. And I don't think I've ever been more humbled and grateful to actually be able to go to work virtually and to be able to talk to people and work with people because it was just such a scary experience. One of the things that I did want to address regarding Dinner Delivered and the pandemic is that when the pandemic hit, all of the delivery services, Instacart, Shipped, Grubhub, DoorDash, and all of them, they implemented what's called contactless delivery. So what that means is that you place your order and you don't even have to have contact with the person who's delivering your stuff. So they may put it outside your door. You may tell them where you want to place your items, but it was just an interesting experience. And for a while there, especially in the beginning, I mean, Instacart, 
and shipped, there was so many people accessing those services that you might not get groceries for a week and a half to two weeks. It was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. You know, you look for a date and there were times when it would say, there are no windows available. Try back again later. It's like, wow, I've never seen that prior to the pandemic, but it's now pretty much back to normal now. Yeah, we'll certainly look back on this time as being a very, very interesting time. Certainly, certainly. Everything, a lot has changed overnight. And a lot of it technology-based, right? For instance, more people are using contactless payment methods, right? More people are using contactless meeting methods. So there'll be a lot of interesting technology changes that result from this time. Absolutely. But we were really grateful that we were able to be part of that group of free books to be able to have people experience more effectively about ways they could get their deliveries and get their necessities delivered to them. So that was fun for us. And we were pleased to be able to be part of that. It was definitely a weird, weird few months there at the beginning, particularly. We were talking a bit about technology a second ago and the changes in technology. What is going on in terms of MVP new technology offerings? Well, we have a lot of really interesting things as usual. So we have a couple new Judy Dixon books and probably the most anticipated one. It's called Capturing and Sharing the World, which is about taking photos and videos on an iPhone. So this is actually an update to a previous book she had done called Get the Picture. But of course, so much has changed with smartphone technology and the cameras that are built into them that this update really is a completely different book. So for anyone who's interested in using their iPhone's camera and video, people, for instance, who are active on social media and want to catalog their life that way, this book is a must read. And of course, Dixon is a great author for all subjects technology. And she'll guide you through all the options that you have available for using your iPhone for that. She also updated another previous title. There was a book that she did, I think, almost 10 years ago called Label It. Well, so much has changed since then that she's done an updated edition of this. And this is called Identifying and Labeling Everything. Now, this is really, in some ways, a technology book as well, because she talks about a lot of the technology that exists now for not just labeling things, but for identifying them. Now, this book is really interesting because she talks about how in the first edition, the first edition really was about labeling things. There was no technology for that first step of identifying the item. So this book first talks all about the technology for identifying and then the technology for labeling. So it really is a complete update. In terms of other technology books, we, of course, later in the year will be updating the iOS books. So we'll have the what's new in iOS 14 at the end of this year, and then the iOS 14 reference card probably at the end of January, and then the full multi-volume getting started with the iPhone and iOS 14 probably around the end of March. So those are the anticipated dates. And then probably a book that I should let you talk about that we're very excited about is a new book called Getting Started with Windows 10, and the subtitle is Using Windows with Screen Readers. And you guys are the authors of that book, <laughs> so do you want to talk about it a little bit? Yeah, that was such a challenge and so much fun to write and to put together. I'm always marveling at how much I learn in the process of researching and writing the books. And Chris and I were actually teaching each other things that we didn't know during the course of writing the book. And that kind of thing is really fun because you kind of start out with a premise. And I know when I initially sent you the table of contents for the book, what actually ended up happening was that we covered all those topics, but it was so different than what I anticipated it to be in a good way. It turned out to be this really cohesive amount of information all about these various aspects of Windows. What is it? Why do I care? <laughs> Why do I need to upgrade? What's the advantage of upgrading? What happens if I don't upgrade? And then, of course, it goes into, well, how do I do it? What's the upgrade process like? Because it's so intimidating for so many people. And then goes on through all the various aspects of both Windows 10, whether that be the taskbar and desktop and start menu and all these things, 
or file sharing, editing, navigating your files, etc. So it's so much information. It actually, to me, feels longer than it actually is. And there's just so much <laughs> in there about all the things there that you can so do. There is much information. Yeah. It is. It is. It was insane to write. When I actually finished writing it, I had to take a lot of that day off that I actually sent you the final draft and just kind of breathe for a few hours because it did turn out to just be this kind of roller coaster experience. But it was so much fun. It was such a technical book that I kind of questioned my sanity at the beginning going, I don't know, did I just bite off more than I can chew here? But it was a lot of fun and it was a really great learning experience. <laughs> I can picture you, I can picture you, like, sending the manuscript to me and then being, like, needing time off. Yeah, it was a great, I really, really am excited that we have this book. It's been a hole in our offerings for a while. As you know, we're very strong on all things iPhone, both the technical manuals about the operating system, like the three that I just mentioned, as well as the ones that go off on all the capabilities of an iPhone. So, we have robust offerings in that. And then we have a small presence in the Android niche, which we're going to be updating soon. We'll be getting a new Getting Started with Android book. But this was like a little hole that I've been trying to fill. So I'm so excited we have this book. And it's an excellent book. I mean, you do such a good job. There is so much in there for people. I think that you could come in at knowledge level zero or with some experience and still get so much from this book. I think it's really great. Thank you. Well, it was a very fun thing to do, and I learned way more about Windows than I ever thought I would ever know, so it actually turned out to be a really fun experience, and it was just a lot of fun to play with a lot of that information. Sometimes you think you know a lot about Windows, and you really don't. So it works out in that way. So when we were writing this book, she taught me something that I didn't know, and I taught her things that she didn't know. We were going back and forth with, okay, what do you put in? How do you write this book? How do you outline it? You know, going from how is this going to take the reader from point A to point B to point C to finally get them at their destination? Well, and there was the piece, too, about the visual element of things. Like, what does this actually look like? Because if you're actually working with a sighted person to have them help you find something or whatever the case may be, or maybe you're doing what Chris and I have both done and taught our mother's skills on some of these topic areas, like checking your mail and doing these things. And while both of us taught our moms in the iOS world, the same thing could apply to Windows. Let's say you're teaching a parent or somebody else how to use an operating system and they're sighted. Well, it helps to know what it looks like. So we were very grateful for the friendly IRA agents <laughs> who took their time to assist us in making sure we knew what we were talking about so that I didn't send it to Cassell and she goes, what's this mean? So ultimately, that part was fun too. <laughs> yeah, I really learned a lot too. And I do always think that's a fair way to evaluate a book. If I'm editing a manuscript and I'm learning stuff, then I'm getting excited. Because I know that that's ultimately what our readers want. They want information that's going to help them in their job, in their life, so on and so forth. And this book is filled with it. I especially love the way you explain the file management. But you have a lot of really robust sections in this book. I'll just tell the reader really quickly. There's, it's broken up into parts, and the main parts are getting prepared, the ins and outs of Windows 10, working with apps, files, and folders, configuring settings and utilizing pre-installed apps, and then going to the edge of the Internet. And within each one of these sections are really robust chapters that just break it down even further. It's a great book. I'm really excited. We're really happy it's going to be available for people. I think a lot of people will be very excited to actually have a little Windows manual written from this perspective. So I hope they like it. So we've talked tech. We've talked holiday cards. We've talked about some of these other things that are coming out. But let's face it, especially right now, a lot of us just want to have fun. So what is just fun that you can share with us? Well, first of all, there's the Peanuts calendar. Woo! As you know, every year. <laughs> Yeah, we put out the Peanuts calendar, and it is, you know, Snoopy and the gang, and it is very popular. It's one of these sort of labors of love. It's a project, in terms of the production and manufacturing of this, it's a ton of handwork, but it's really worth it. And it sells out within just, you know, a week. So I would say as soon as you can, as soon as you get your holiday catalog, call us up and order your calendar if you want it. The other fun things are, well, we have a fashion book. We have a women's fashion book, which I'm really excited about. So it's called Susie on Style, Look and Feel Your Best. 
and that's a collection of women's fashion articles from the Our Special Magazine. So the Our Special Magazine is a woman's magazine that we publish, and it comes out six times a year. And we've been publishing it since, I think, like 1938 or 39. I mean, it's a really old publication. Wait, don't quote me on that. But we've been publishing it for a very long time. And so we have collected some of these fashion articles together into one volume and then published it. And it's really relevant stuff. It's for anyone who just wants to find out what is a good look for them. How do you find your personal style? It's an interesting series of articles. And then we have a Deborah Kendrick book called When Your Ears Can't Help You See. And this is all about strategies for blind and low vision individuals who have hearing loss. So this is that combination of hearing loss and loss of vision. It's a really, really interesting book. It'll go through everything from the social implications of losing hearing to what it's like to have both hearing loss and vision loss, how to talk to your audiologist, what to expect with your relationship with your audiologist, what technology is available, how to even make that choice of which hearing aid is right for you. It is just filled with interesting information. And then... My personal favorite, for those who just would like a good laugh, (laughs) we published a book called Super Funny Satire from The Onion. Now, The Onion, as you may know, is a website of just like satire, like fake news, and it's just really very odd humor. We've pulled out ones that are appropriate for a younger audience, and we've put it together into a one volume, and we publish it in both a contracted and uncontracted versions, two separate versions. And the idea is this is just an amusing way to practice your Braille reading. So if you're someone who's just learning Braille and you want something to read that is appropriate for a younger audience, then this is a book for you to think about. We had done one for an older audience called Super Short Stories and Uncontracted Braille. And that was very much adult content, like short stories, very much adult content. So this is sort of the same idea. Someone who's learning Braille, but not an adult learning Braille, this would be a younger person. And it's really, really very humorous, so I recommend that. I think any teenager would really like this book quite a bit. And they're so hard to shop for, so it's always really helpful to have a present that'll be like, oh, cool, something fun. Matter of fact, I love this book so much that I want to read a couple of the article headlines so people get an idea of what kind of stories. So you'll see it is, if you have a young teenager in your life, you'll see this would, I think, be a really, really great gift. So bear with me, I'm opening the manuscript, and I'm going to read a couple of the article titles from the table of contents. <laughs> uh, okay, here's the one. Woman not as fun-loving and carefree as pom-pom on winter hat would suggest. Um, here's another one. Supportive parents encourage child's interests in anything within 15-minute drive. <laughs> You know, so it's just these, it's like satire. It's just these funny, short, little satire articles. Here's another one. All all of Area Man's positive qualities stolen from past friends, right? So it's just these (laughs) funny little satire things. (laughs) And it's just so funny. So yeah, if you're a teenager, you want to practice Braille, you want something funny to read, this is a great book. And you got to have that thing that motivates you. You know, if you want to continue your Braille learning, something motivating will be good. So if you want to have a serious laugh while you are actually reading and being entertained, well, then there you go. There is your passport to improving your Braille skills. Oh, you will definitely laugh. I had so much fun putting this together because the satire is for, the website itself is for adults. And I was looking for things that would be appropriate for kids, really. So I don't want anything too edgy. Definitely want, you know, clean language, so on and so forth. So I had to read a lot of articles (laughs) to find the 30 or so that I pulled together. And I was laughing so hard. It was so funny. And the ones that we ended up putting in are really, really funny. So let's be honest. You don't have to be a kid to buy this book. Mm -mm. Any adult, I think, would find it hilarious. It sounds great. And then the last thing would be Thursday Morning Quotes, Volume 2. So as many people know, we put out these quote books of inspirational quotes, and we cycle through the days, so Monday Morning Quotes, Tuesday Morning Quotes, so on and so forth. Yeah, the idea being that, you know, for Thursday Morning Quotes, every Thursday, you'd flip to a new quote. But anyway, so this is Volume 2. We've been through the week. We're going through the week the second time now. So it's something I always recommend as a gift. Again, also for someone if they're learning Braille, because the quotes are short. 
So it gives you something that you can practice on and read and get success on these short snippets instead of having to read through. If you're learning Braille, you know, reading through a 30 page essay might not be as fun <laughs> as reading these short snippets. It's not, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> So that's it. That's what we have in this catalog, this new holiday catalog. And of course, you can visit the MVP website to find out more information or give them a call. To reach NBP by phone, please call 1-888-965-8965. And to visit National Braille Press's website, please visit NBP for National Braille Press, nbp.org. And you can enjoy adding treats to your gift list from NDP. Cassell, thanks so much, as always, for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. It was really fun. I appreciate it. Thank you for your visit to the Mystic Access Magic Castle. You're welcome anytime. We are here with a rather exciting announcement with both Guidelights and Gadgets and Mystic Access. And Chris, Kim, and I are, it's very short. Sure we're all here because. We've got something pretty exciting to announce to y'all. Daisy players don't come along very often. It's not quite as remote as maybe a button exciting, but it's three or four years at least, usually between one and another. Well, we've been monitoring a player for several years in the Evo series that is made in China. It's actually been around for about, I'd say, eight years. They're groups of players. But they've always lagged behind in some features. But with the most recent player... I decided and then introduced it to a Chris and Kim because I said, you know what? We've got something here that can be, call it the low price spread, but it gives you an awful lot of features for an awful lot less money than you might find buying a stream or another player, especially if you're going to buy a Freck. What it does is, and the first thing I want to make is a caveat, and Chris starting interrupting me whenever, but the first caveat is this. It will never do barred books. It is not meant to do them. The company does not want to go through the process. However... And this is the caveat the other way. It does a wonderful job of reading Bookshare. And the most exciting thing, I think most of us all agree on this player, is that it uses the Avona voices that people have just come to really, really like. And Joey and Sally are really, really, they're very understandable. The Bookshare reading is really good from uninterrupted listening. And that may be the best feature of it. Now, why are we doing this now? The reason we're doing this player now is because two things got added in the last six months. And those two things finally make this player of having the point that it can be compared favorably to some other items that are out there. You now have both an internet radio database and a podcatcher database, and you can do some very similar things to what we are used to doing on the Victor stream if you're a user of the internet radio or podcast features. And that makes this a player, especially when you look at a price point, which will give you an idea. We are looking at a price point of at least $150 below the cost of a Victor stream. And with many features in here that a stream doesn't have. As Barry said, it does not do barred books. But one thing I tried earlier today, and it does really well, is EPUB. So if you have EPUB books, It'll read those as well. It'll read Bookshare books. It'll read EPUB books. It does a really nice job with audio files. It does a really nice job with DAISY, both text and audio, which I've played both on. And it has a really unique interface that I kind of like. Let's take a little comparison of the Victor Stream, for example. When you go into the Victor Streams menu, you have to press 7 multiple times in order to get to an option that you want. This device, however, when you go into its menu, its menu is context aware. So if I'm in the middle of playing an MP3, for example, I can change different facets of the MP3. Maybe I can turn on the equalizer. If I'm not on an MP3 and I'm in the FM radio, that menu changes because I'm now in the FM radio. So that's really, really nice. You don't have to wade through options that aren't supposed to be there or that aren't relevant for my task. The other thing about this is the fact that with the stream, for instance, you would also have to cycle through bookshelves to get to particular menus. So for any of you who have used the BookSense product from HEMS, you'll recognize a much more kindred spirit in this player than those of you who utilize 
a stream. So it's more book sense like than stream like, particularly as concerns its menu structure. You want to oh, find a lot more similarities. The other thing that I know some people really, I won't say dislike, but it's like a nuisance we get used to. There are a lot of people who forget when they go to multi tap entry when they're trying to type in a particular search. For example, on the OOTunes database, you've got to pretty much remember where you are, A, B, C, D, E, F. The thing I like about this player, maybe a little slower than it does this, but you are only using the up and down keys for navigating among the letters of the alphabet. So that you know you're starting either with an A or a Z, depending if you're going up or down. You go up to the letter, you basically hit the right arrow key, and it puts that letter in there. But you don't have to remember. Now, let me see. Seven is PQRS. And that's a good feature. The other thing about the file types that Chris was talking about, this also does one thing that while the stream does, the Trek does not. This does a very good job of playing MP4 video files. And that's sort of nice, especially if you download a bunch of stuff from YouTube. Let's talk a little bit about the device itself. A couple of things that I really like about the device. The power button is flush to the unit, so you really can't turn it on unless you want to turn it on. The other thing is these buttons are very, very tactile. They're very, very easy to press. I've actually found myself using the key lock function more than I would because if I'm walking around with it and I have it on its lanyard, I might bump it up against a wall or bump it up against myself, and it would hit buttons. So the buttons are very, very easy to press. The key lock is very easy to turn on and off. And it has, in my opinion, the best speaker on a player in its size. It blows the speaker away on the stream, on the Trek, on the Plex Talk pocket, and also on the book port. And I'm saying that from personal experience, having put this through its paces against all of those other speakers. And speaker. speaking of size, how will we compare this to some of those other speakers? Well, size matters, right? It does. It does. Uh, I'd say it's about two-thirds. We say that about two-thirds the size of the stream. Yes. And it's a little bit wider, not much, I think maybe half an inch. I find it, uh, yeah, maybe, but it's got a smaller form factor than a stream does. The other thing that people may realize, and Chris, that's good about the buttons, because this, anyone who has, like sometimes you've got, if you've got somebody who's dealing with a little bit of neuropathy issues, yes. the stream can be pretty difficult to use because the buttons are not distinguishable enough. These buttons are farther apart than a stream, but at the same time, it's still a smaller unit. The other thing they've done with the buttons is the controls have dots that point different directions that sort of gives you a sense when you're sort of touching them where you are. Like, for example, if you're on the left side, you'll have, you're hitting a button, it's going to have a dot pointing to the left. If you're on the right side of the player, the dot's going to point to the right. And on the five key, you've got a dot in the middle. So I guess part of this, and the talk about simplicity along with this, the most, I'd say, 60, 70% of the functions of this player are performed with two buttons. One of them being a menu button, which gives you through all of the choices, which I think we'll probably show in a couple minutes. And the other being the back button, which is taking you out of like a backspace, taking you out of the menu structure. And yes, there are other keys. There's music keys. There's bookmark key. But with those two keys, basically menu and back, you can do about, I'd say, three quarters, almost three quarters of the functions. And the cool thing, too, about this device, on the bottom row, you've got a music button, an FM radio button, and your bookmark button. And those first two buttons, you can change them to whatever you want. There's a whole slew of stuff that you can change them to. For example, on my player, I don't want wireless on all the time. So I reprogrammed the radio key or what comes default as the radio key to turn on the FM radio to my wireless on and off toggle. So that makes it very easy for me to just say, okay, I want to turn wireless on. So I just press that button. My wireless comes magically on. I do what I need to do with it. And then I turn it off with that same button. So I don't have to go into the menus in order to turn wireless on or off. And that brings up something that I want to mention. You were talking earlier, Barry had mentioned about the differences between this and Stream. And three things come to mind immediately to me when we're talking about it, two of which we've touched on here. FM radio is a huge one. You get an FM radio with this product. And you two have said, and I haven't seen this yet in full disclosure, so when I see it, I'll be able to tell you more from my perspective. But listening to these guys talk about it, the FM radio is apparently 
fairly robust in terms of what you can pick up in your area. It is. It's a better radio that you find in little MP3 players by far. You don't have a lot of the cutout when you get to a frequency of a station that's not local. It doesn't quite tune in. It's got to, when you're there, you're there, and the sound quality is pretty good. That's nice. That's good. So that's one big thing, and I would say that's one of the largest differences between stream and this player. But two others are one that Chris just touched on, the customization, being able to reconfigure certain buttons to act and behave in different ways to do different functions. The other is the fact that this thing has an alarm in it. So if you need an alarm and want to set an alarm, you have the ability to do it. So not only do you have the clock functionality that you would find in a stream, you can also set alarms if you need to do certain things. I think you got five of them, actually. Oh, I, think cool. there's, I think there are five alarms in it. Another difference along that line is this. When you record on the stream, you're recording from in the notes file, basically, unless you're recording line in, like an internet radio program. But here, there are separate functions for actually making a recording and doing a reminder memo. So that is one function. If you want to do a quick note to yourself, that's going to be using one specific function. If you want to record, there is a dedicated recording button. And also, and again, this is, I like this too. You can not only record from the FM radio, you can record from the internet radio. So you really, whatever sources you're working with, you really, it's very configurable to do what you want to do with the radio and the recorder. It's got a lot of options built into a fairly compact menu. And the nice thing too about the radio, this is something that I like when you're seeking up and down, it announces the frequency, which is very cool. So can you, you know turn exactly that off? where you are. I don't know if you can turn that off. You might be able to. I haven't played as much in the FM radio as I've played with other devices. One thing that I did notice too, like the stream, it has speed control so that you can speed up your whatever you're listening to and unlike the stream at least i know the book port does this when you speed something up if it's a stereo recording you lose the stereo it turns it into mono you do with the stream too with this one i don't know it depends on what you're listening to but you still get the stereo when it's sped up you know i hadn't even noticed that and i've been playing with this thing for quite a while but that one sort of escaped me should we sort of run through the menu? What do you think of that as an idea? To, I think it's a good idea. I've switched to my phone so that you guys can hear what this thing sounds like. Of course, it's a decent representation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on. The first thing that happens is you're going to feel a vibration, and then you're going to hear sound, a little sound effect. Yeah, that's nice. It has haptic feedback in it, too. So there's a pretty sound. So if you have a stream and not a track, you're not used to having haptic feedback in your player. And it's booting up. It does. Chime and then. You might want to turn her up a smidge. Volume volume sixteen. So it said something dot mp three. So where did it put you? It put you in a group of files, I suppose. It put me in the last. It's pointing to the last file that I'm reading. Now, if I want to know what that is, I can hit the info button. Christmas 06 P01 MP3 136 point one five megabytes. Total five files. Current one. One hour fourteen minutes three seconds. So your total of all five of your files is one hour fourteen minutes? No. My total of all five files is about five or six hours. So that Okay, so your current files total is being read there in addition to the Correct. fact that you have five files in this folder. Right. So if I hit the info button again. Time now is eight forty two AM, November twenty seventh, two thousand twenty, Friday. Battery full. So it says battery full. Now if I hit it again. Wireless inactive. My wireless is not active. Christmas 06 p mp 3 136.15 megabytes. Total five files. Current one. One hour, 14 so, minutes, three seconds. Just for the sake of doing so, I'm going to press play. Active in church and civic affairs and couldn't afford to have it known that he'd been dallying with a French hussy. The only way he could keep Sarah... Playing mode. So I hit the menu button. It says playing mode, normal. If I hit the up or down arrow keys now. Equalizer, normal. There's my equalizer. It's normal. Speed, normal. There's my speed. It's normal. If I want to change that, I can press left or right. Pitch, zero. There's pitch, is zero. Playing mode, normal. And the playing mode is back to normal. So let's just, for the sake of doing so, I'm going to hit the right arrow key. Playing mode, shuffle. Shuffle. Playing mode, single play. Single play. Playing mode, repeat one. Repeat one. Playing mode, repeat all. Repeat all. Playing mode, normal. And then back to normal. So, 
I'm going to press back to get out of the menu. Setting canceled. Fiend from paying a visit I'm going to, press to Mrs. Hot. Back Christmas again. Six P O one dot MP three one hundred thirty six point five megabytes. One hour for out of my MP three file. Now I'm going to press the menu key again. Now watch this. Volume fifteen. Whoops, that was the volume button. Volume sixteen. So we're going to press the menu again. Network. So now it says network. If I scroll down, I can see what else is in the menu. But if I press select, I'm going to be able to turn wireless on and off, scan for wireless networks, and all that stuff. So if I down arrow. Version information. So there's version information. Device information. Device information. Time settings. My time settings. You can have it automatically set using the internet, which I think is cool. System voice. The system voice. Okay. So I'm going to press select on this. Voice. Sally. So now we've got Sally. Now if I hit the right arrow key. Voice. Joey. There's Joey. Now if I hit select. Setting saved. System voice. It saved the voice. Now I'm back in the menu. If I continue to scroll down, I've got... Alarms. Alarms. Resume play settings. Resume play settings. Hotkey settings. Hotkey settings. This is what I was talking about, about being able to change those hotkeys. Recording settings. There's recording settings. You can go in and play with those. Startup sound and vibration. I can make the player either vibrate, sound, or both. Tools. There's a little menu for tools. Check for updates. I can check for updates. Default factory settings. I can reset the factory settings. Network. And now we're back to network. Let's go into tools a minute because that's where a bunch of the functions are sort of laid out. Default factory settings. Check for updates. Tools. Now, unlike the book sense, the one thing you can't do here is hit, what, five for one thing and three for another or something. Correct. There, there, is, no <laughs> there, there no is no keypad. There is no keypad. Right. There is no keypad on here. So I'm going to press select on tools. Voice reminder. So there's your voice reminder. That's how you can create a little voice thing, like take your pills at 12 o'clock or whatever. Voice memo. There's your voice memo. Calculator. Calculator. Timer. A timer. Compass. A compass, which is kind of cool and does work. Disk management. Your disk management, where you can do things with your SD card, your thumb drive, if you have one connected, and or your internal storage. We didn't mention, but this has... 16 gigs of internal storage, and you can use full-size SD cards in here, as well as connecting a USB thumb drive to the player. Radio. There's your radio. Voice reminder. There's back to your voice reminder. So if I press back again. Tools. And I press back again. Christmas 6 mp 3 I'm back to my megabytes. book, One hour 14. and I can play oh, well, it. Well, close to fill a satchel full of... So, so if you want that, to get into another book or another program, I can press back. Christmas of six mp one dot MP three. Back again. Oh six. A Colorado Christmas. I'm just Folder. backing out my folder structure. Christmas folder. Main folder. Audio book. Folder. Choose internal memory or SD card. SD card. Choose internal memory. That's as far card. back as SD I can card. go. So if you one. go into something, you pick from among a folder structure because it said main folder. So is that like yes. a root? Yes. So if I go up to internal storage, internal memory, or internal memory, I'm going to press select. Main folder, Daisy folder. So we got Daisy uh, where we put our Daisy books. DODP. DODP. Internet radio folder. Here's internet radio. Podcast folder. Podcast. Record folder. Record. VTuner folder. And here's where you want to go for VTuner. So this is v where you would. This is where yeah. you would go to do your podcasting or your internet radio. What says internet radio, it's not the selection point. It does say internet radio. And I believe it'll show you your favorites if you're there. But I believe really, that's right. If you're trying to pick stations or pick podcasts, VTuner is the name of the app that it uses. Now, one of the other things about the buttons that Chris was demonstrating, as I said that he was going to back button and the menu button, which is just sort of opposite from the back button, you can always sort of get back to your menu very easily. So while you back out, you always have a sense of knowing where you are as you're using the functions on this player. And the other thing that I like, and this does something that this formats your disks automatically to work with the Evo 10. So if you put a disk in, it's going to create a DAISY file. It's going to create its own folder structure without you having to do that. And that's sort of more like the text talk in the book board plus does. Yeah, or that, books you, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So you don't have to go, do I want to format this? They tell you, by the way, the manufacturer tells you that its capacity are 32 gig cards, but you can use larger cards with it. I have if you format them for FAT32. You can do that, of course, with the stream or some other things too. But if you want to use larger cards, there's an option and a way to do that. I'm actually running a 256 in here right now. Ah, that means you formatted it. Yes. FAT. Yes. Yes. FAT32. Yes. Yeah. And the nice thing too is you don't have to stay within their structure. For example, Choose internal memory or SD card. Internal memory. I'm going to go back to the SD card. SD card. I'm going to press select. Main folder. Audiobook. Folder. So there's a folder I have called audiobook because I use this card between multiple devices. So if I go up. Audible. Folder. Android. Folder. Now Audible will not now, work. I'll send LSDB to 9045. Just so you're aware. Folder. Right. So as you can see. Dollar VR text. Us For those LSD people that are familiar with Victor Streams, I've even got my folder structure dollar VR. Yeah, I saw a couple dollar VR folders. If I wanted to go into, let's say, dollar VR text, dollar VR podcasts, yeah, dollar VR know. other books. I wonder folder. if I have anything. Dollar in here. VR notes folder, dollar VR music, no files, no files because I don't have anything in there. No files. So I got to back out of here. Main folder, dollar VR. Let me see if I have anything dollar VR in. Notes. Dollar VR other books. Let me see if I have anything in other, other books. No files. I do not. Main folder. But, but if you did, you could play it. Exactly. Could. And the other thing about the folders and files that I sort of like is it takes the card as you give it to it. So that you don't have to think about, mm, do I have to format this card? What do I got to do with it? If you've used it before, if it's got stuff on it, you're going to be able to find it and find it where you use it. For example, it does come when you put it in, it formats a couple of folders on it. It's going to give you a music folder. It gives you a DAISY folder, and it gives you something called DODP. And what DODP is, it's not really relevant for the U.S. market. It's some other countries that permit internet downloading of books. There's sort of a file format that is used for that. I think it's a DAISY term, actually. That It does have a standard, but it's not relevant to us for that. Right. I think we should probably, because one thing we've really held up on, we haven't really said very much about this, is what do you get with this player and what does it cost? And one of the things, and again, this is where something where it's really great for the three of us to be able to collaborate because when the two companies sort of get together, the ideas go flying and we started, what do we want to do with this? How do we want to put it? What would be the most attractive package to customers? And here's what we've arrived at. The player is going to come with the 128 gigabyte SD card. It's going to come with a leather case. You don't have to buy a leather case separately from executive products. We will put in a pair of I love ILUV headphones, which are basically, they're made to work with iProd, Apple products. We will put in a pair of those that are a little higher quality than the ones that you get with it. So yes, we will put in a second pair of headphones. It's going to come with a lanyard and it's also going to come with the tutorial because Mystic Access is preparing a tutorial for the player. So there will be a tutorial, whether we put it on yet, we're not really sure whether it's actually on the player when we do it, or it's just something you download. But there will be a full-blown tutorial for this. So then we say, all right, we've got those features. You've got 16 gigs of RAM. What are we looking at a price point? Our initial price, and I think I don't mean it's just initial, I think it's going to be around for a while. We are pegging this at $225 with the card, with the case, and with the player. And probably there will be shipping on that because, as I just not so jokingly found out yesterday, when you import something, there are times you end up having to pay custom fees. And free matter from the blind doesn't cut it when it's coming from China. <laughs> so as I found out yesterday when talking to UPS. So we're going to probably end Well, what we will do is, and we haven't really spent time talking about this, but we'll use some level of like a flat rate prepaid shipping, especially because for the rest of how long ever COVID lasts. It's sort of the easier way to do stuff. So whether it's a $10, I think it's actually like guidelines. We do a $10 flat shipping charge for all of our packages, regardless of what's in them. And I think we probably follow that here. And we're both going to, both Mystic and Guidelights, this is sort of a collaborative project. I have been looking at this for years, but I got really excited about it. And I just wanted to get Chris and Kim into this because, again, we don't see many book players come along very often. And when you do, especially if it's got some of the alarm reminder functions for medications, for example, the separate recorder and voice memo, you get a number of features in here that really make this stand apart, especially for the lowest cost player of this type that's on the market. Let's talk about the timing of this. 
this player is available now. We have a fairly good order supply on this. This is not something that goes away. This line of players, again, has been marketed for about eight years. And I have sort of followed them. I actually own every one in sequence. But the only time I really said, let's try and think about distributing this is when they hit the pod capture in the internet radio. Because at that point, it becomes a very formidable alternative at a lower price point. And that's sort of, you know, in a, in a time where if you break one of your players, particularly, you don't want to have to spend $375 all the time on a new stream. So this may, if Bard, you have other ways for doing it, like on your phone, if you can basically sacrifice using Bard on this particular device, this becomes a really sort of neat alternative with an awful lot of features. You guys agree with that? Yeah, Absolutely. I know that when I got my book sense, I thought I was going to use it for Bard playback back when I got it and Audible playback. I didn't. I used it as my dedicated music player for all the stuff that I have. And I have reams and reams and reams of music. And that's where it became for me. It really became my dedicated music player. That's what I exclusively used it for. So if you want something to use either for an exclusive purpose or for a few purposes that perhaps do not include reading your Bard books or your Audible books or something like that, then this is a great alternative for you. And this is why when we do the tutorial for this, that Chris is going to be our shining guide here in terms of showing you what it can do because Chris listens to a lot of audio drama. He's got a bunch of audio described stuff on there. He's got OTR stuff. So he's really going to be showing you kind of the gamut of what this thing could do from a very diverse standpoint. And that's just in terms of its audio playback. Yeah. And it does, it covers enough formats that even like described audio, whether it's OGG, whether it's MP3, as I said, it does very nicely with MP4 files. And I really appreciate that because I have a lot of YouTube MP4s and especially a lot of music that. I always want to put into a folder and make use of somewhere. The other thing you can do with this, and it's, you forget about how, you know, how useful this is. Let's suppose you want to add folders to your card. You can pop this into your computer. You can create your own folder structure, and it will honor it when you put it into the player. So that if you want another books category, if you want a movies category, I always put a movies category on my cards for this player. If you want to do that, it's just simply to, to create a folder and just put it back into the player, and you, it'll see it. So it really is recognizing whatever content labels you're putting on things. Let me show you something really quickly. Dollar VR podcast. Dollar Assist Android. Audible. Audio. Daisy. Folder. So here's Daisy. I'm going to press select. Bookshare. Folder. There's a Bookshare folder that I created. Within the Bookshare folder, I've got... Star underscore wars underscore Christopher underscore Grabowski underscore Daisy underscore text underscore Star Wars registered. The last of the Jedi number two. Dark warning. If I press select again. Obi-Wan Kenobi watched from the cockpit of a grounded, dilapidated cruiser as Boba Fett methodically searched the crowd. Pause. So I just paused it. Now I'm going to hit back. Star Wars registered. Back Last again. Of, star underscore wars underscore. Back Christopher. again. Bookshare folder. There's my bookshare folder. I'm going to down. Cutting the cord with blindness or low vision daisy product folder. <laughs> That's a mystic access tutorial, which will play in here. Which is awesome. Learning Ally. Folder. There's Learning Ally. News line. NLS. Folder. 24-7. Folder. So here's a folder with another book in it. 24-7. I'm going to press Time pl- now is 9 a.m. Play. Listening intently as the host talked to her mother. My mom on TV. How cool is that? Then. So awesome. it's a daisy book and it completely remembered what had happened. One thing you noticed, it said the time is 9, blah, blah, blah. And then I muted it. But you can actually set this thing to announce the time every 15 minutes. So you can do every 15 minutes, every half hour, or once an hour, which I think is really kind of cool because if you are reading along in a book and you're trying to keep tabs on the time, that will Let's say you you have a meeting you have to go to, Chris. You and I wouldn't be guilty of this at all, ever. Right. (laughs) So you're just tootling along, reading your book, and then it'll, it'll pause the audio for a second. It'll say... The time is 9 o'clock a.m. And then it'll continue playing your book. You don't have to do that, but it is nice. Yeah, it's also for medications. You can do that the same way. Yep. I tell you what time. There's one other thing I want to bring up, and it's almost a little bit sort of soft stuff. But this is a company that if you put a feature up, you better be prepared to have it put in. Because this is not like it's a smaller company. But we've got direct access to the programming people. So I asked them, I'll give you a specific example of something I've asked them to work on. I don't know if we'll get it, but 
I think it would be really neat to be able to set an internet radio recorder to go on to record, say, a football game if you're not at home. And then when it gets to the time, say, three hours later, to turn off the recorder and turn off the player. They basically said to me when I said, is that doable? They said, yeah, we could probably do that. We got to convince the programming team that it's worth the effort. But again, we are dealing with, if there's something people think it's within the realm of, you know, something that not creating a whole new app, it's, you know, tweaking something, making it better. The responsiveness with these folks is pretty good. And their English is pretty good as well, which means, I mean, I talk to the one lead person from this company, mostly by email, but occasionally by phone all the time. And the company which manufactures this, I think it's called BinVision. They've been around quite a while, and they actually make a number of other Evo players that are meant for different markets. But this is really meant for the English-speaking market. And that's why, again, that's the package. We'll have more detail when we put out. We're going to put a piece out on this, presumably, on the website that just like a features, sort of features, cost, specs, whatever. Right, guys? Absolutely. We can do yeah, that'll yeah. all be on the well, product page. We'll have it up yeah. on the news page. So, yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. It also has a sleep timer. So if you press the power <laughs> button. Automatic power off. 10 minutes. Warn 15 seconds before shutting down. Enable. So my sleep timer is now on, but I'm just going to press and hold the power button and it is going to... Shutting down. Shut down. It is now off. And on that note, so are we. So are we. Thanks Thanks for listening. Thanks, guys. Talk soon. Bye. The preceding podcast is a presentation of Mystic Access, where the magic is in learning. If you are blind or visually impaired and desire to discover how our comprehensive products and services may support and empower your assistive technology journey, we welcome your visit at www.mysticaccess.com. Have a question or wish to place an order via phone? Call us at 716-543-3323. If you have something to share about this podcast episode, press 4 to reach our Mystic Access podcast comment line. Email us at info at mysticaccess.com. Connect with us on Twitter at twitter.com slash mysticaccess. And like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash mysticaccessempower. Would you like to spread the word about our podcasts? Your friends and colleagues may listen and subscribe at www.mysticaccesspodcast.com. If you enjoy our episodes, consider leaving us an iTunes rating and review. Your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks for spreading the word, and thanks for being a listener. We hope you enjoyed this episode.